I want to just say that one of the things that I've appreciated about Tim is that every Sabbath he comes here and he's so excited to see me here. <laughs> and that says a lot to me. I appreciate that. You know, um, being a pastor, one of the things that you know is that you know that you are here just temporarily. You know you're not going to be able to stay here forever and ever and ever. You know that you're brought into a church and that your talents and the way you are bring something to the church in order to help it grow. Move to the next step. And it's always good to have someone say to you that they appreciate you. And I appreciate that. <laughs> now, when someone goes from our church, I believe we send a missionary to another place. Amen. And they need missionaries even down in Wilmington. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I know that that wasn't your plan, but your wife was sent there. So you're going to be a light in that area. And we're going to be praying that the Lord will be with you in Wilmington. Amen? Amen. And I'm a firm believer that a family shouldn't be split up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, because I had to come here, Mrs. Peterson came, your wife went ahead of you. Now you're going to be down there where she is. Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell you something that I believe. This is Christmas time. And I believe we need to talk about Jesus Christ and his birth. Because if, as I look out in the world today, there are way too many people out there that live their life as if Jesus meant nothing to the season. Now I know that some of you will have a problem. You won't like the Christmas tree on the platform. Some of you will say to me, now, Pastor Peterson, you know that that's pagan. Yes, but so is the tie. <laughs> so if you don't want the Christmas tree, I get to take off my tie. <laughs> Mrs. Peterson likes this tie. So I'm just telling you, you know, there are a lot of things that we have brought in that were pagan in the beginning. But they do have some points. Maybe what the issue is, is that the pagans took over things that were originally signs for Christ in the beginning. That's what I believe. And I believe we need to talk about Christ and put Christ back into the season. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, I want to start off and I want to start talking to you about part of the reason for this season. It began actually by promises that all started back with the confusion. Why is it that when we commit sin, the first thing that it seems that we get into is we get into this time of confusion where we wonder about what's going to happen. You know, when you commit a sin, there's some elation that comes along with it. It's kind of exciting to do some of these things. Have you ever found sin to be exciting? You think about it, you plan it, you do it, oh, it's so exciting. But what happens afterwards? They're Adam and Eve. They're in the garden home that God had made for them. And it was a very confusing time after they had disobeyed God and eaten from the fruit. That God said, no, don't eat it. As I explained to the kids in, in our school, it's uh, something that I learned of the... Uh, Indians up in Alaska. There are such great expanses up there that sometimes they can't carry everything. And uh, they use nets in order to catch fish. And one of the things that you have to have in order to have nets is they have these little glass bobbers that hold up the nets. And if, a, if an Indian is walking in Alaska and doesn't want to carry something, they will lay it down and they will put a circle around it. And every other Indian that comes by will know that if it's inside the circle, it belongs to someone else. Now the problem with those of us who live down here is we want to know who it belongs to and whether we should take it or not. 
But in Alaska, it means it belongs to someone else and they leave it alone. That's what God did to the tree. That's mine, leave it alone. Simplest test in the world, and yet Adam and Eve broke it and failed. And so, now they waited for God to come. Have you ever had an appointment that you dreaded? Maybe the IRS says that they want you. None of us like getting a letter from the IRS, do we? I know I don't. And so there was some confusion. They were wondering what was going to happen. Everything in their lives had been turned upside down, and now things were changed, and they were wondering what was going to happen with things. And the Bible says that they came to the time when God regularly came, and what did they do? What did they do? Hid themselves. I know about hiding. One of my children is a hider when he did something wrong. He liked to hide. And if you like to hide when you do something wrong, and so they were hiding when God came to see them. Are there any of you here that are afraid to be in God's presence because of your sin? talking about the promise today so you don't have to be afraid. Amen? Amen. 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 So, take your Bibles, turn to Genesis, the third chapter. We're going to specifically read verses 11 and 12. Jesus, or God, starts talking here and it says, And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And that man said, That woman that you gave me, that woman that you gave me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Now, I have believe that God knew everything that Adam and Eve did. Amen? Amen. You believe that? Yes. God knows when we see, he sees it all. What did our mothers tell us? Be sure your sins will find you out. At least that's what my mother said all the time. By the way, if you don't know, my mother will tell you she is here. My mother and dad came down. They are here with us today. You'll meet my mother. She, is, she doesn't know any strangers just like I don't know any strangers. Amen. I was told, by the way, you notice in the bulletin it says that I'm the guest speaker next week. They told me that I remain a guest until my membership gets here. <laughs> I didn't know. So, don't you love how this all came about? Because what happened is, in the beginning, God says, well, why were you hiding? And so, you know, Adam, what does Adam say? Well, I realized I was naked, and so I hid myself. You know, why is it that we always tell, we commit sins, we start off with the half-truth? Have you ever noticed that? You get caught in something, you get caught in a lie, and what do we do? we got to continue it. By the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you something about police tactic right now. The police will ask you more than once, if they bring you in for something, they will ask you more than once about the events that happened. Do you want to know why? They know that a lie does not have an anchor in your mind. And if you will tell it each and every time, a lie changes. By the way, kids, you start off with a lie, your parents will sooner or later know that it's a lie. Because I have a feeling that a few parents use the same tactics as what the police use. Amen? Isn't that true? That's how my mother always did. She always asked more than once, and sooner or later the lie came out. 
I told the kids a dumb story about when the pastor lied. But that's a whole other story. I'll wait for another time. Anyway, so now God comes back and he says, okay, who told you you were naked? And then he really goes for the truth. Did you eat from the tree? At them point by the clip. Now, did God already know? Yes. God already knows. And I love what Adam does. It's that woman he gave me. Now, who was he really blaming? Was he blaming the woman? Now, I love my mother in law. My mother in law gave me a little plaque. I know it's somewhere in the boxes someplace. And now on this plaque it says that men have wives because there's some things that you can't blame on the federal government. <laughs> I love my mother-in-law. She understands this. So, you know, there are some things, I know what we all like to do. When there's problems, we like to blame the federal government, right? Okay. It's just like everyone's talking about Obamacare. Well, why? You gotta have something to blame, you know, when things aren't going right. But so you know, blame it on the government. If you can't do that, have a wife. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Although I'll tell you, I think my wife has a way of blaming me on stuff too. So I think what goes around comes around. True? So What happens when he gets to the woman? Who does she blame? The serpent. By the way, who made the serpent? I want to tell you something. On that day when God comes down to talk to Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve are not the only ones there. The devil is waiting because he is waiting to see what is going to happen. He knows what God has said. If they ate from the tree, what was going to happen? They're going to surely die, right? We all know that. So what happened was, is that Satan was ready to say to God, if you go kill the people, you're a capricious God, and you don't really love them in the long run. He was ready. If he didn't, pronounced judgment upon them and didn't follow through, what was Satan going to say? <laughs> Your law means nothing. There's nothing to it. Therefore, God is false in what he's asking you to do, right? By the way, we're going to be spending the next year talking about the life of Christ. And you're going to see that Satan uses the same tactic over and over and over again against Jesus. And you know who are the greatest ones who do it? The members of the church. Just think about that now. Anyway, let's go on. In this scripture, we get the promise. Now, this promise is repeated over and over. We get different facts, different points of view. But this is the basic promise that we have from the beginning, right? Because notice what happens in verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now, look at what happens from this point on. Adam and Eve know that this is the promise that for someone from their offspring is going to come, and is going to provide a way out of sin. By the way, how many of you really enjoy sin? Is living in this world a good thing to have? Have you ever noticed that we try to correct a problem and you get something worse? Sin is a terrible type of thing. And one of the things that we have to realize is who put Jesus on that cross? You see, God did something different than what Satan ever believed he would do. He immediately had a plan that the moment that sin was conceived in this world, he immediately put 
a Savior in our place. That's the promise. When you read in the book of Hebrews, it was that promise that kept every one of the great men and the women of faith going because they believed in the promise that Christ would come. Amen? Amen. Amen. We celebrate at this time of year because we know that our Savior came into this world. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. Now, everyone else will think we're crazy. Praise God, I'm crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you that. By the way, if you notice, it's the people who say that they're not crazy that really should be in the sideboards. You know that, don't you? They're, I'm not crazy. I'm going to tell you, I'm crazy for the Lord. I am crazy for the Lord. He died on that cross in my sin. My sins were what he took up there. Amen? Your sins he took up there. And if it wasn't for what Jesus did on the cross, none of us would have any hope. Because the promise was from the beginning what was going to happen. He was going to take care of the problem with sin. You see, the problem with sin is what comes from it. The one thing we try to avoid, isn't that true? I'm of the age now that every six months I get to meet with the doctor. We try to make sure that Pastor Peterson's blood pressure is where it should be, that his cholesterol's not too high, because I know the doctor wants to keep me around so he can charge me more. <laughs> right? And so we do all of this because why? Is there any other one of us here that really wants to die? Folks, I've been in enough hospitals. I've been there when people die. And absolutely everyone fights it to their last breath. You don't have to be afraid. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he fulfilled the promise and you don't have to be afraid because what's going to happen if you fall asleep in the Lord? What's going to happen? The next conscious moment, you're going to see Jesus coming down from heaven to take you up to go home. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day because I know that Jesus Christ, the promise was fulfilled. Let's, you know, let, let's take our, uh, our Bibles and check out them. what happened with the promise. Matthew, the first chapter. Matthew chapter 1, verses uh, 21 to 23. The angel is talking to Joseph and he says, And she shall bring forth the son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will what? Save his people from their sins. And so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated what? God with us. I want to remind you that at this time of the year, we celebrate Christ's birth because God is with us. We celebrate Christmas because we know that Jesus Christ came. Now, folks, I know that probably Jesus' birth was in September. I understand all of this. But, folks, this is a time of year where it's celebrated. We can all say about how the Catholic Church got it wrong. I don't care. The whole world is talking about Christmas. We need to talk about Christ's birth. Because he came here to save us from and out of our sins. Amen. Amen. God is with us. And if God is with us, we do not have to fear death. You know, they were talking in, in the Sabbath school class this morning. Was it primary room, was it? With early team. No, primary room. They were talking. See, I went to all the classrooms to pull the clock. 
in the primary classroom, they were talking about Saul. And when the Spirit of God left him, what came into his heart? The Bible says that God sent that evil spirit into his heart. Now, folks, if you're afraid to be in God's presence, I'm going to tell you how to take care of that. Bring Jesus into your heart. Amen. As long as you have Jesus, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have life eternal. I love the math from the Bible. It is so simple. If you have Jesus, you have life. If you don't have Jesus, It is not hard. Jesus came into this world to forgive us our sins. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to continue talking about this story till the day I die because of how good it is that God has done for us. Amen. Uh, I know what I am. I am the chief of sinners. I'm going to tell you, I know that. But I know that when Jesus is in my heart, I do not have to fear. Amen. There's a reason why we're having communion at this time. It is reminding us that Jesus has fulfilled the promise. And yet, there's still a part of the promise that we still have to look forward to. Isn't that true? What's the thing we're still looking for? Now, everyone's been asking me, do I like the Carolinas? Folks, I'm going to make it clear right now. I enjoy being here in North Carolina. Just live in Houston for a while and you'll know why I like it. <laughs> Let's just put it to you. Just live in Houston. I love being here, but there's something I'm going to love better. I'm going to love when Jesus comes again. Because that's the promise. As he and his disciples are standing out there outside of Jerusalem, and as the disciples are looking on, Jesus says his last words, and he's taken up into heaven. And what is the promise that the angel gives us? This same Jesus, as you have seen him go, he's going to come up again in the same manner. Amen? Amen. Jesus is taken up by a cloud of angels. <laughs> what are we looking forward to? The reason why communion service is so important to me is that in this one service, we celebrate what Christ did in coming to this earth but we also celebrate what we are looking forward to. His second advent, that he's coming back again to take us home. Amen. I don't know about you folks. I've got some loved ones that are waiting in the grave. Yeah. <laughs> and when the Savior calls, there's nothing on this earth that is going to keep them in that grave. Amen. Amen. Because they gave their hearts to Jesus. And again, I want to remind you, if you have Jesus, you have what? Life. So today, we celebrate the great promise that God has given.